point, I was done with everything I needed to do, and I was heading to uh, Qatar Airlines to board the plane. I asked questions, and the guy saw me, and he was like, follow me. I think he works for Qatar, so I just followed him to where I was supposed to board, and then I got on the plane, I did everything I was supposed to do put on my headgears, fasten my seatbelt, and then I started looking for a movie to watch. I ended up settling for Black Widow. It was really nice. And then after a few hours, they came with the food. Um, I chose chicken, and then they served me chicken and rice. I want to say that, you guys, airport food is really hot, like so hot, because, I mean, the plane is cold, the AC is on, so just be careful with before you can put it in your mouth and then it burns your tongue because it happened to me twice and i don't know why i didn't learn my lesson this thing they served us it tastes like salad but like in a weird type of i don't understand what like i don't know what's going on with that but it was like salad and i do not like salad and it was just like weird salad i had a difficult time eating that i just gave up on it and then i started eating my rice it tasted really nice. I liked it. And then they also served orange juice and I really like that. So yeah, then I continued eating my food. I decided to try this thing again. I I was just telling myself that okay, maybe it's in my head, maybe I'm you know judging too soon and nope, it wasn't in my head. It's bad. I don't like it. It should be banned. Nobody should be eating that. And then I continued with my um dessert. This was really nice. I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was ice cream cake or something. I don't understand, but it was nice and I liked it. I enjoyed it i ended up finishing it and yeah that was the end of the first meal they gave us i didn't end up eating this bread i also didn't end up using the towel and after a few hours passed they came and they served us this sandwich i'm sorry that this <laughs> The clip is so dark, but guys, this sandwich is like, ah, it's the best thing ever. It's so good. It's so, so good. And they served this again, and I was so happy about that. I tried to give you guys a window seat view. I didn't get a window seat, but the person there was nice enough to help me do that. So we landed at Doha, and we entered a bus that took us to the entrance of the airport. Doha's airport is, is really nice. I mean, I expected more because of how, like, it was hyped. I don't know. It just felt like the Emirates airport to me. It felt like the Dubai airport. So I was like, um, but it's really nice. It's really nice. When I got in, I checked um my flight departure on my next flight, and I didn't have enough time to really explore the airport but i did like 20 minutes <laughs> 20 minutes adventure to just see it because ugh, it's my first time i need to see i don't know when next i'll be here so let me check it out it wasn't that bad i just expected that because i already saw some parts in people's videos and stuff so i just expected to see more if you know what i mean but it was really nice regardless i liked it let me give you guys a montage. I decided that show was over. I'm not going to miss my flights because <laughs> I'm exploring the airport my father would kill me <laughs> anyway i headed to my next destination for my next flight to miami and yeah i bought it did everything they served us i don't know what they served me this time but i chose beef and 
it wasn't that good it was just okay but i wasn't so hungry so yeah again be careful with airport food it's really hot you don't want to burn your tongue <laughs> And they served us fruits. I don't really know what was inside that thing, but but I didn't eat much of it. And then I took my dessert. It was similar to the first one they gave us at when we we're going to Doha. And then I had an idea. Let me try this bread with the dessert. And when I tell you guys, it was the best decision I made <laughs> on this trip. It was so good. I ended up finishing it. It was really nice. I liked it so much. And then they served us sandwich again. And then at this at this point, I think I was watching Harry Potter or something. Because obviously, Harry Potter is the best movie. <laughs> I'm joking. And then I took my orange juice. We landed at Miami. At this point, I was already getting a little bit tired. Most out of the whole trip, America is so far. I feel like I was so ungrateful the first time I took a direct flight. Yeah, this is me. <laughs> tired at this point. And then I took a train to the main airport. I don't know what that was about. But I had to go to another side of the airport. And then at this point, I was done with immigration. Immigration was so hectic for some reason. It was like, you can see I'm so tired. It was like three times or three stages or whatever. And I'm like, ah, ah since when did they used to do this one? So I walked to where I was supposed to take um, the next plane to Birmingham, Alabama. After waiting for like four hours in Miami, it was finally time to go to Alabama. So at this point, I was so tired. Satisfy your cravings. Don't you want to try? Don't put your eyes in the fantasize and know about me and you. So pull me closer like there's nobody else in the room. Hurry up and don't you stop. Check it back outside of pop. I didn't have to go through immigration again I think that was the whole point of doing everything at Miami so I landed here uh, I called my best friend and she ordered an uber for me and um, this is me heading to my apartment home <laughs> experience everything i feel like you need to know because some people already started messaging me about like um for information on how to be an international student the whole process and everything and i just want to make it clear that my channel doesn't really cater to that my channel is more of lifestyle and beauty fashion but like i feel like because i'm putting out this video there'll be people that probably want to know things about you know the whole process of being an international student so i'm just going to talk about it and this is the only video i'm going to address it i made a note of things to say on this uh ipad as you can see so i'm just gonna be talking about everything so um the first thing you would want to do is you would want to start this process early if when you make the decision to become an international student you're supposed to start there and then for example now this is on 2022 there are three semesters in 
three semesters basically we have the fall semester the summer semester and the spring semester most people usually pre prefer to resume in fall or spring but basically when you make the decision to become an international student you want to start doing everything start the whole process just basically start start doing research start knowing what you need start knowing the documents you need if you're planning on coming here in fall of 2023 you're supposed to have started right now you're supposed to have started applying to schools you're supposed to have started doing your research just start early okay one of the things you need to do when starting early is getting your documents ready so um okay before you get your documents ready just know that this process costs money i'm so sorry for like my baby so annoying right now this process costs money so when you make the decision to come here just know that it's going to cost you money and i'm not talking like okay i'm going to talk based off of being a nigerian because i am a nigerian so i can only give you the experience of a nigerian i can't give you the experience of a Ghana or any other country even if it's not an african country this process costs a lot of money i'm not talking one million naira i'm not talking two million naira in fact five million five million will only be enough if you are fully funded if you have a full scholarship that's when i can say that okay five million is most likely going to be enough for you because the truth is you're going to buy your ticket and ticket alone the flight ticket alone it costs a lot of money especially if you don't buy it way ahead of time my ticket almost cost like it was up to a million naira and it was just a one-way ticket it wasn't a return ticket so a return ticket is when you're going and you're coming that's all like to and fro that's the, that's what's called the return ticket in case you don't know the meaning my ticket was just a one-way ticket and it was almost a million naira it was 900 and something thousand naira so you can see that ticket alone is costing one million if ticket is costing one million your accommodation is going to cost more than that especially if you don't have a guarantor when you're signing off your lease there are so many options for you to choose you can choose to sign it off using a guarantor if you don't have a guarantor you can choose to what i did was i didn't have a guarantor so i had to pay for the first month and the last month of my lease so you're going to pay first and last month of your lease like straight up and then after that the next month you're still going to pay your rent okay so like that alone depending on how much your rent cost that alone is already a lot of money especially because you're not paying in naira you're paying in another currency that is not yours especially if your currency is way lesser than the currency you're paying in so you can see that almost a million is already going to ticket and then a lot of money is also going to go to your rent i can't do the math right now but that is a lot of money already on tickets on, and on rent so <laughs> five million naira i'm just giving an estimate five million naira might be okay if you are fully funded most people who are fully funded are already going to start working in school so i mean you're already going to be making money as you're like spending money do you get but if you're not fully funded five million naira is nowhere close to being okay for you especially if you're paying school fees like <laughs> imagine your school fees is five million naira that's school fees alone so where are you not going to get money for your ticket for your rent and for like other things because you'll be made to settle down and one thing that is so important is money especially when you're settling down like what are you going to feed on things you're going to buy you need money for that so just know that this process costs a lot of money so have it at the back of your mind that you need a lot of money and one thing i want to say is when you're going for your um visa interview it's important for you to have a file where you keep all your documents so that when you're going for your visa interview you don't have to you not be allowed in with any electronic device your phone or whatever so um <laughs> just have a file for all your documents okay i'm going to talk about the general documents that you most likely need and then there might be more documents that you need and if you do include that i'm just giving like a general for example now if you need a document proving that your a parent is is deceased or if you need a document proving that you're married you're supposed to carry that document along with you i don't need to tell you that for you to know that you're supposed to take it basically any document that is going to serve as a source of evidence or proof of anything that you know the visa officer is most likely going to ask you about just carry that document just carry it just save yourself that stress because you don't want to get there and then they ask you for a document and then you can't provide it it's going to seem less authentic okay so one of the general documents you need you need your international passport you need your transcript from all your schools actually because some schools will request for your WIAC certificate as well so you need your transcript you need your certificate and make sure your international passport will not be soon to expiring it's going to be expiring six months before you start this process just renew it save yourself any stress you need your certificate you need a recommendation letter this depends on how much the school is asking for my school asks for like three recommendation letters some schools ask for just two some schools ask for three what i did was 
um, I was able to get two academic re recommendation letter and then one work recommendation letter. So it was like two academic and one from like work experience. It just depends on what your school requires. So just work towards the requirement of your school. Okay. You will need statement of purpose. Statement of purpose is a written essay. You're going to write this by the way. It's a written essay of you just telling the school why they should admit you, why you qualify to be admitted. Just you explaining why you want to school there, why you want to study there, why you think your school is the best fit for your career purpose. And then some schools also require you to submit like a paper. So it could be like your project from like your bachelor's or something, a school project or anything like that. So yeah, you need that as well. I think these are the general documents you need in order to apply for admission. And then when you get your admission, the school is going to, everything depends on the school, okay? That's why I'm saying this is a general Thing I'm giving out some schools are different, others are different as well. Usually, when you're admitted, then you you might be awarded some form of scholarship. I know that some schools award students some form of scholarship if um your grade was good, for example, if it was like a first class or a second class or power something like that. Everything depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for full funding, then you might take it up a notch and do some extra things like including something in your statement of purpose, you know, telling the school or meeting professors and you know, telling them you want to work with them for you to get like full funding or something. Full funding or full scholarship requires extra work, okay? So it's not just, oh, I'm going to apply like everyone else. No, you need to be doing more than that. I think for some schools, you also need your CV. And for some schools, there's some exams you need to write. But other exams are English exams, TOEFL, IELTS, GRE, GMAT, whatever. But not every school demands of this. So you can pick schools that you don't require exams for you to write and you can go with that. Or just know that. If you want something for free because in this life what is truly free to, if you're being honest so if you want like full funding or full scholarship just be prepared to go the extra mile for you to find a professor because i mean like it's an institution that is based on you know profit and revenue and all of that so like if trade by barter is exchange knowledge for money so if you decide that oh you don't want to give the school money the school is not going to be profiting off you then you should be ready to put in the work to make sure that you get that full funding so you, you should be ready to have a very good cv you should be ready to reach out to professors you should be ready to do interviews and all of that when you finally get admission some schools require you to pay deposits this will be added to your school fees and also even if you decide not to go to that school the deposit is usually refundable so yeah you can get your money back if you're not going there anyway so um some schools require um a form of deposit some schools are like 500 dollars deposits deposits could go all the way up to like two thousand dollars it depends on the school and also you will be needing um proof of funds like you need to show the school that you have the money you have the money to pay for your school fees and this is also important for your visa process as well because nobody wants an international student to be a liability like they just want you to come here school and go back to your country so any other Thing you're trying to do that's on you so you need to figure it out so the documents you'll be needing after admission you need a service fee student exchange something 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 i can't remember what it's called <laughs> but you need to pay your service fee it's i think it's 350 dollars you need to pay for that you need to pay your visa fee mrv you need to get your when you when you do your service fee and when you um, show your proof of funds and when you do your deposits it depends on then again it depends on the requirement of the school after some of all these things that are required You'll be sent a form that is called an i20 this form is just like i don't want to say you know how your visa gets you into a country your i20 just it stands for you like it's proof that you're a student so you'll be needing this like almost in like everything you need to do that requires like identification or some other thing it depends on what is required then when you fulfill all these deposits statement of funds everything that the school needs you to do you you get your i20 from them after you do all of this so for your visa, you, you need to have paid your service fee, you need to have paid your MRV fee and picked the date for your interview. You need to have gotten your I-20 from the school and then when you get over here, there's an I-94 form. That, that one has to do with when you get here. It's not, it's not big of a deal. It's basically just like immigration processing that, okay, you're in the country. The cost of tickets, usually during summertime, tickets, the cost of flight tickets is usually so high. That's why I mentioned almost a million naira. I know some people will be like, what? Is that expensive? Well, it didn't used to be this expensive. At least not that I've experienced, but you usually it was usually expensive for like 350, 400, and whatever. It depends on the time you book and whatnot. But this time around, it was quite expensive. One because it was already summer period where when I already like everything was settled and it was time for me to buy my tickets. It was already summer period. And you know, summer everyone is traveling. The weather is great, high demand, so there's gonna be like high supply. So you're gonna pay more. That's just it. Um. So that's one of the reasons why my ticket was so high. 
and also i think it had to do with like inflation or whatever it is that's going on in the world right now with like the war and you know gas prices flight and travel and inflation and everything i feel like that also contributed to the price of flight tickets being all over the place now i would want to say that i flew with qatar airline it was my first time flying with qatar the benefits of flying with qatar is quite nice they allow for extra luggage as a student or if you have like membership with them or something like that um so all you would want to do is whether you've booked your ticket or you've not booked your ticket you want to download their app you would want to sign up for like membership or student membership or i don't know shout out membership <laughs> someone told me this and i don't really remember the process all i know is what i did was i downloaded the app i signed up for a form of membership i got like a membership number so that membership comes with incentives like it comes with like nice stuff and one of them is extra luggage so as a person or as an individual you're entitled to i think 23 kg two luggages that weighs 23 kg you're not supposed to exceed this amount if you have membership or if you're a member of of kata if you have like student code membership code or whatever you're allowed to carry an extra 23 kg luggage this saved me i'm putting this out here because it saved me from extra luggage like if not for my student code and you you want to when you sign up for this you want to print out the number and everything on your phone so that when you're at the airport and they're like okay your luggage blah blah you just tell them that okay um i have a student membership discount code whatever and then they'll ask you for the number and that's what is going to stand for you if you have like extra luggage i feel like it's a very good deal and i feel like a lot of people don't know about this i didn't know i just found out recently so i feel like more people should know about this ah, i hope this helps whoever is flying Qatar air or whatever just sign up get your membership deal and travel with that extra luggage this wig is annoying me i swear it's gonna be a long flight so just prepare yourself like prepare yourself if you're coming all the way from nigeria it's going to be a long flight it's going to be so long because america is really far especially if you're like stopping over if you if it's a direct flight to like delta air or whatever it's still going to be a long flight the cold is in the airplane it's like so cold so carry your jacket don't be looking at other people ah this guy's not wearing sweater this guy. carry your sweater especially if you don't do well in the cold i had like two fujis on and i was still cold yes and this is so important get to the airport hours early i don't care if your flight is by 10 p.m be at the airport by 3 p.m have you seen have you seen the crowd at the nigerian airport recently like have you have you seen the crowd it's a lot by the time you get there by the time you queue by the time you go through all the process by the time they probably set your luggage by the time by the time you are done with everything you will not even know when it's already time for you to start boarding you will not even know when it's already time for for the plane to take off so get there hours before i think the recommended time is like three hours before but let me tell you get it like four hours before because me i went there like three hours before and when i tell you i don't even i don't even remember what happened because it was just go 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 like from here to here like before i knew it it was time to enter the plane i didn't know i was saying oh i'm going to film this i'm going to film that a lot is going to be going on that if you're a content creator you might not even have time to film anything like because it's just there's a lot going on searching your stuff getting your documents ready be stamping this doing that doing that so you want to be there like hours before especially with traffic in lagos it's better to get there early and wait than to get there late you don't want to do that so get there if, if your flight is by like 10 p.m you should have left your house before 6 p.m i'm not even joking like you should be there you should be at the airport by 6 p.m if your flight is by 10 p.m so for you to be at the airport by 16 6 p.m with how there's usually traffic when everyone's coming back from work by 4 p.m so better leave your house by like 3 p.m i'm telling you leave your house by 3 p.m so that you won't meet traffic before you get to the airport i'm not joking don't listen to twitter people that are laughing at you that oh why are you guys going so early go early go early better to be safe than sorry go early okay and i also want to say it's important to join whatsapp groups with people that have the same goal as you i know that as a nigerian everyone we don't want to tell people when we are traveling it's sensitive or whatever but it's important to voice out some things because you never know who who is in that same journey with you and who needs help and who knows what like I, like i just said i did not know anything about kata membership code and no one is saying it the videos i've watched no one has said it if i was not in a group i wouldn't have known that it existed so it's important to join groups with people that have the same goal as you yes it's sensitive to tell people that you're about to travel with the whole superstition and everything <laughs> i get it i understand but you also a close mouth is a close destiny you don't want to regret not speaking up okay so just voice out talk know things okay it's important telegram group whatever group you know that's gonna help you for this twitter whatever just be informed basically be informed 
do your research google things if there's anything you don't know about just talk do your research ask people okay especially on twitter like i know that twitter is such a toxic app twitter is also good with information like there are things that you might not know that it's on twitter twitter knows it's very toxic so a lot of toxic people are there like but twitter still has information so like i said it's quite sensitive to talk about your jackpot plans but ask questions like don't just receive information from one person okay receive information from different people because as someone who is not informed it's quite easy for you to be manipulated okay, that's the truth that's the reason why a lot of people go to agents because they feel like oh they don't know anything the person is overwhelming and i get it some agents are good i'm not gonna lie not all agents are bad and it's not bad to go to an agent but i promise you you can do this yourself without going to an agent i also know why you want to go to an agent because you don't know the process you're overwhelmed blah 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 i get it i used an agent myself but what i know now with what i know now there is no way i would use my agent again if you don't know something it's quite easy for someone to manipulate you it's quite very easy for someone to manipulate you because they know that you don't know it so don't just ask questions from one person yes i know it's sensitive to tell people about your plans but just the truth you don't want to be manipulated by just one person you like don't put all your eggs in one basket don't trust people don't i'm an advocate for having trust issues because that saved me this life so don't just trust one person and put all your eggs or hopes in one person because that person can disappoint you so find other people that have the same goal as you when you're getting an information from one person you can be checking that cross checking that information with another person this is just to make sure that you don't get manipulated by someone who you feel like you should trust and someone who you feel like had your best interest at heart it costs money it costs hard work but there's nothing you can't do if other people are doing it you can do it so don't try to tell yourself okay well i don't have three million i'm going to not follow my dreams of going to study abroad i don't have three million i'm just gonna forget i don't have 10 million i'm not doing it again it all depends on positioning how hard you work people you reach out to if you don't have enough money i advise you to try to find a scholarship i'm giving an estimate okay like don't watch this video and be like hey this girl is lying um, because i know how people like to misinterpret things so if you know you do not spend up to three million that's good for you i'm just saying like i don't think anyone should budget like a million naira for a process like this because it's not possible there's no way one million is going to do anything for you here Except if you have someone that decides that they're going to sponsor everything and the person that is sponsoring everything is not one million dollars then your flight ticket alone do you know how much that costs your ticket alone is almost one million i see all these tweets that oh how to travel with zero zero dollars how to travel with zero naira it's a lie it's just for algorithm purposes it's just so that their tweets can trend and their algorithm their what's it called their engagement their analytics can look nice it's a lie it's a lie even if you have a sponsor someone is footing your bills someone is deciding to pay that money so there's nothing like zero naira it's a lie don't fall for all of that because if you're fully funded you will still look for who will pay your ticket you still look for money for it yeah this process needs money that's what i have to say i feel like we've come to the end of this video my hair has just been a mess and over the place oh my god now i have to straighten it again before i leave um my channel is not dedicated to visa process international anything that has to do with like becoming an international student my channel is not dedicated to that my channel is primarily for lifestyle vlogs beauty fashion all of that girly girly stuff because <laughs> that's where i am that's my feminine nature so yeah if you're looking for a channel that does more of like international student process and stuff the channel i'm going to recommend to you is aladia core um i watched that a lot when i was in nigeria if you like lifestyle stuff beauty stuff fashion stuff that is what this channel is for and please subscribe so now that we are at the end of the video i like to say thank you so much for watching <laughs> forgive me i'm just feeling myself i'm feeling my makeup <laughs> thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment share and subscribe my name is tora bell and i'll see you guys in my next video bye